Hello everyone, welcome to the another video on Java programming by IntelliPark. In this video, we will unreveal the concept of method overriding in Java. We will explore its definition, gain insights through the examples, and walk you through the implementation using VS Code. Additionally, we will examine the advantage of method overriding. But before we delve, don't forget to subscribe to our IntelliPart YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. So before any further delay, let's get started. In this video, we will try to understand method overriding in Java. And one more thing guys, we have already created a video on method overloading. So you guys can go and check out that video as well. You can find the link of that video in description below. Now let's try to understand what is method overriding in Java. In Java, method overriding is a concept where a subclass provides a specific implementation for a method that is already defined in its superclass. So what does this mean? This means that suppose you created a parent class and you declared some method into that and after that you created a subclass that is child class and you are using the same method that is used in the parent class in the subclass. So this is what the method overriding is. Also, the overriding method has the same name return type and the parameter as the method in the superclass or the parent class. Don't worry guys, if this definition is not clear to you guys, we will try to understand this with the help of example. Let's try to understand this with the help of example. Suppose you declared a class that is animal and let's consider it as a parent class. After that, we have declared another class named dog and this is a child class. So here we can see that we have a method named move in the animal class and we are using the same method move in the child class also. So this is overridden method and after that this is overriding method. Now let's try to understand this with the help of one more example. Suppose we have declared a class named animal and after that we have declared a method that is make sound and we are just printing the generic animal sound. Now we have created another class named dog that extends animal. What does this mean? This means that here we can see that the method make sound is the property of the class animal but we are using in the class dog also and we are printing the message bar. So I hope you guys are clear with this and if it is still not clear then don't worry guys we will try to understand this with the help of examples on the VS code. So let's directly jump to the VS code. Now let's try to understand the same problem that we have discussed of animal and dog in the VS code. So for that let's create a class first named animal. Now after that, we will pass a method into it and the name of the method is make sound. Make sound. Since the make sound is not returning anything, so we will keep it as a void. Now we want to print some message like uh, generate animal sound. So for that we will do system dot out dot println and we will pass message into it that is generic animal sound. Now first of all I would like to print this message so for that what we have to do here we have to create an object that is animal my animal is equal to new animal. After that, we will simply do my animal dot make sound. Now let's try to execute the code and see the output. Here we can see that the output is generic animal sound. So we want to print this. Now let's suppose we will create another class, class dog extends animal. So so in this we will use the method that is make sound make sound which is a type void now in this we want to print a message that is bar so let's do that system dot out dot println bar now here we can clearly see that we are using the same method of make sound here in the class animal and dogs so 
Now we will try to execute the code and see the output. So for that we have to make here dog. Now let's try to execute the code. So here we can see that it is not printing the generic animal sound. Instead it is printing the bark. So this is what overriding is in Java. Now let's try to understand this with the help of one more example for better clarity. So for that let me remove this first. Now suppose if you want to find the sum of two numbers for that let me create a class named calculator. After that we will create a method named add which is integer type and we will pass two integer as a parameter that is a and int b. Now we will simply return a plus b. So at this point suppose you want to add 2 and 3. So what we will get? You will get 5 as the output. Now let's create one more class named advanced calculator. which extends tell. Now, again we want to find the sum of two number, but this time we want to add some extra. Like in this, we want to find the sum of two numbers, but with some extra. Like, let's do that first. int add int a comma int b. Here we have mistaken, it should be tally. Now, we will simply return a plus b. Now we want to add extra light plus 10. So, here we are taking the add method in the child class. And suppose if you want to add 2 and 3 but with extra 10. So it will be 15. Now suppose we will run the code. What output we will get? We will get 15 or 5. Now let's try to print it first. For that, we have to remove this. Now, calculator. We are creating object basic cal is equal to new advanced cal. After that, we are declaring result which is equal to basic basic calc and suppose we want to find the sum of 2 and 3 2 and 3 Now we'll print system dot out dot print ln and result. Now let's execute the code and see the output. Here we are getting some error. So let's find that first. Oh, so here we did mistake basic calc dot add function. We haven't called the method add. Now let's execute the code. Here we can see that we are getting 15 as an output. So instead of getting 5, we are getting 15. So this is what the overriding is in Java. I hope now you guys are clear with this. Now moving forward, we will look into the advantages of method overriding. So so one of the advantage is code reusability. So what does this mean? This means that the method overriding promotes the code reusability by allowing the subclass to reuse the behavior of their superclass. So instead of re-implementing the same method in each subclass, you can override a method in the subclass to provide a specialized implementation. So by this, you don't have to declare or create the method again and again in each subclass. So this is what the code reusability is. Now the second one is flexibility and extensibility. So what does this mean? This means that the subclass can extend or customize the behavior of their superclass by providing their own implementation of certain methods. 
This makes it easier to adapt existing code to new requirements without modifying the original class. So that's all we got in this particular video. I hope now you guys are clear with the method overriding in Java. To see more updates like this, follow the Intelli Part YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any update from us. Just a quick info guys, IntelliPath offers Java certification training course. Through this certification training course designed by top industry expert will help you master the Java programming language. We provide the best online training classes to help you learn OOPS concept, core and advanced Java, JDBC, objects and classes. As the part of training, you will get to work on real world industry projects. With this course, we have already helped thousands of professionals in successful career transition in IT industry. You can check the testimonial on our Achievers channel whose link is given in the description below. Without a doubt, this course can set your career to new height. So visit the course page link given in the description below and take a first step towards the career growth.